It's a big day here on the Ramshackle Ranch. We've got a, a bunch of chickens going to show up and I want to make a self feeder for them. And this is not a new idea and I'm not going to claim credit for it, but it is a fairly good idea. All I'm going to do is get these elbows that I've scavenged from around the place and this bucket, which is an old chip rock bucket. Um, if you've been with us for any length of time, you know that we like pulling stuff out of bins, scavenging, repurposing and reusing. For marking these tubes where they're going on the bucket, you might be tempted to mark on the outside, but then you'll have a hole that's a bit too big. Just do it. So I'm just softening the PVC of this bucket with heat because this stuff is a lot easier to work with when it's warm rather than cold. I want this nice and tight. So, I've made it just a little bit undersized. Now when I heat this up, I can squeeze it in um, and then you know, the, the plastic will come back around there because that diameter there is a little bit more than there. Oh, nice tight fit. So there we'll have these tubes. And of course, as the chicken comes in and investigates, it'll have the grain right there. Oh, she's in. Throw it in. There's a chicken eye view. <laughs> We've covered the, the tops because of their shape, they won't. You know, it doesn't fall any further. So this is an on-demand feeder. One chicken. Cafeteria. <laughs> okay, so we can just um, we can just pop the lid on here now, and rain becomes less of an issue. Oh, Gertrude! All right. <gasps> Gertrude, she does this every time. Hey, she's so mean. Oh, that's, she's got she's got the feathers in her mouth. Girl. That's why Annie's got all those feathers missing out of her. She's done. She's pretty. Never laid an egg. She's got some beautiful hackles. You're not allowed to beat up mums. Just for the record, this chicken has always been a problem hen. She was beating up the chick the first day we got her. And now she's beating up Annie because Annie's vulnerable and is clucky and like sitting on an egg. She's in. She's in. She calm? Yeah, she's calm now. That comb works really well. I think we'll just leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to clean. Um, didn't struggle much. I think just the hanging upside down for a while, she was sort of pretty knocked out. So. Oh, that's good. That should be fine by the time I carry it down. Mm -hmm. It's reading 149. 65 degrees Celsius. It's almost like we're on a farm, isn't it? We've got <laughs> loads of apples and a, a, a chicken hanging there with a ready to pluck. It's really great having um, our hot water hooked up to the wood stove because at the moment it's winter, so the wood stove's off and running, but it means we've always got hot water on tap. She's dead. Yeah. So the last thing you want to do is throw a, um, throw a, any sort of animal in hot water that's not completely gone. I certainly wouldn't like it for myself. She's big. Oh, she is big. 
with plucking a chicken, it's not a case of just like, just add boiling water. Um, so before we got to here, Pasky was up there at the sink and she, um, and she was keeping a very close eye on the temperature. So we want about 59 to 65 degrees C, or in Fahrenheit, 140 to 145, because that hot water is actually breaking down the proteins hanging onto the feathers um, and loosening things up. Pasky says, do it for about two minutes. And what we'll do is we'll just do a, a little test pluck and just see things come out easy. And it's amazing, but when you get it right, how, how easy it is. Not yet. No, well, no. she's... Um, Big. She's not all wet. I, I actually, yeah, I need to, I need to do more ag agitation to get... Yeah. But that's amazing. Just by holding it there, the... Didn't work. Didn't work. It definitely needs agitation. You need to get all the hot water all around, and she's quite fluffy. She's starting to look feathers, the feathers are spontaneously are starting to come off out. now. Yeah. So, um, Straight off. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So let's do it over the wheelbarrow. Yep. Oh, so easy. Smells like wet dog, hey? <laughs> yeah, well, they don't have too many baths. <laughs> this was the, the one and only bath. <laughs> At least our little mother hen now will be totally unmolested. Yeah. Because no one else gives her a hard time. No. She was really cruel. Because the thing was that before Annie, the mama hen that's sitting on her egg at the moment, before she got all clucky and broody, she was actually more dominant than this hen. This hen was always fighting the others to assert its dominance. It was the, it was the biggest chicken. That it had the smallest fight in it. Yeah. And it actually waited till Annie became a mum before it started, started to... attacking her. If you have a look carefully, you can just see you know, some very fine um, feathers. They're like hairs. We'll do that out here. <laughs> it <laughs> smells. <laughs> it does. It smells exactly like burning hair, doesn't it? That, that's all that's required. We've got mum's dog here. We're just doing a bit of babysitting at the moment. That is the puppy, your mum's puppy. <laughs> Covered in mud. Totally not a farm dog, are you, Teddy? We've got a lot of yellow fat on this bird, so that tends to, you know, that's from um, getting a lot of grass. Mm, free range, lots of pasture. We're racing against the clock because we have to go pick up our new chickens. But I'm going to just put all these chicken bits. We've got the breastbone and the legs, and beautiful yellow fat. We're going to put it all into the slow cooker with some onions and some smoked garlic from our friends Jacob and Heidi. Um, and that's about it. I'm going to cover it with water, add salt and pepper um, and a whole lot of parsley that we also got from a friend's garden. Um, and then we are going to just simmer it away while we go and do the rest of the things we need to do today. Older hens, it's recommended that you slow cook them. Welcome, girls. Welcome. We'll have that. Um, we'll have that little one. Thanks, Pascal. Thank you. Come in. There you go, girls. It's a little more. Oh, it's somewhere flat. Yeah. Just, right, that's a bit better. Well, there we go. We've gone and got um. 11 more high line chickens. They've, uh, they're retired, so they were working out there at, at Charcoal Springs, walking around on the grass and things like that, but now they've hit two years old, so they're no longer commercially viable, but they're good for us. So we're gonna have a little upgrade, 11 new chooks to follow on after our pigs. It's gonna be great. I, I feel like a, we're getting closer and closer to making it a real little farm. Is there any joey in it? Nah, no joey. No joey? Oh, that's good. That's alright. We've 
we were just coming back with our chickens and we just saw this little doe, you know, female kangaroo. She got hit by the car in front. Um, they kept going at the time, but they, we did see them turn around and come back and they saw that we were taking care of this room and they, they gave us a wave, so they did the right thing. We were, just, we were just a bit quicker on the scene. We did check inside the pouch for a joey. That wasn't, um, there was no joey there. And at the moment, I'm just, um, just trying to get the blood out. We don't want it to go to waste, so. I've just hung it on a, a metal pipe, a bit of rope, and um, just with some of my climbing gear, I, I just made a, a mechanical purchase so I can hoist it up a bit easier and just suspend it at, at the right height. So we're gonna go sort our chickens out. I'm gonna let this just keep draining. It's really nice and cool. Um, and then we'll, we'll sort out this little kangaroo because there's no point going to waste. There's, um, there's a stomach in there that'll be full of grass and stuff like that, which the pigs will enjoy. Um, and the rest of it is dog food, and this tail is for us. Sorry if you find this a bit gory, but we just didn't want to waste any kangaroo. Oh, one more. <laughs> Those bludgers over there by the feeder. Oh, she's up. Good work, chicken. Ah. Off to a good start. Get out of here. <laughs> so I would I would say that the, um, the the chook feeder is a success. All the chooks have had a bit of a go at it, so they're aware of it. What other bit of recycling's been going on? We found these. Um, Pasky got a, a wheel a deal of price. I think she paid like two bucks a pop for these things at the at the tip shop. They were just going to waste. They're pretty broken. They're not much good for use with a lawnmower. But, you know, they've got some nice air vents um, and they're a nice dark spot and they're portable little chook laying boxes. So that was pretty handy. Um, earlier in the videos, we saw this bit and it was uh, loose, but I put this all together, screwed it to this frame, put some wheels on it, and now it's a portable shelter. We're not relying on mesh to keep the chickens safe. We're relying on the electric fence. So they'll be able to just sort of roam around eating uh, grass like they want to. Once they're used to going back and sleeping in this, we're gonna be moving this around and we'll, we'll move the electric mesh. The mesh isn't for the chickens, the mesh is purely for predators. Nothing too fancy is there, but um, we just used waste materials. The only thing that we had to buy new was the, a bolt <laughs> and a couple of wheels. Everything else we've found, so that's pretty good. Well, the electric mesh, you've got to pay for that. You can't just find and improvise that. I'm going to make them up a, um, a waterer as well. We want to uh, move the chooks somewhere and then 10 days later come and move them again. But then, until then, we want them to be watered and fed for 10 days without too much interruption. We just want to come and check the electric fence and have a, a head count. Grab let, the eggs. Yeah, grab the eggs and let them out. So we'll probably be opening the, once, once they're used to this, We'll open the mesh to let them free range after midday. The top of the feeder here, um, that's, that's more than 10 days food for these chooks. And you can see it's not just pouring out, just, and it's a, a function of those spouts like pointing downwards. Very, very easy project. Took us less than an hour to put it together. This looks uh, amazing. It doesn't look amazing, but it smells amazing. It smells amazing. <laughs> it's slow cooked chicken, so it's sort of fallen apart. Well, it's been a uh, it's been a hell of a day, folks. We've uh, we're down one chicken. We're up eleven chickens. Yes. Um, we salvaged the kangaroo off the side of the road, so the pigs are very happy. The dogs have got some free food. 
just every day is a big, big day, day at the moment. So yeah. luckily I have a nice big dinner. And there's more in the pot? There's more in the pot. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Here's to Gertrude. Here's to Gertrude. Nourishing us. They're not raining terror on the other chickens. <laughs> mm. So there's no waste from cider making. Mm. <laughs> so while they're occupied, I'll just quietly go and fill up their grain ration. Morning, chucks. So that's our first night that they've spent in their, their new little home. Last night, as dusk was coming, they actually recognised this house more as like their trailer that they were used to because they've, <laughs> they've come from big mobile trailers. So they were walking over here and they're trying to figure out how to get into, into this part. It was a little bit dark for filming. So I actually had to go and individually pick up each chook and put them in there in their new house. But um, it looks like they, they've adapted well to it. So I'll go and have a look and just see if that some of them are in the laying boxes that we provided. Turn off the electricity! So there's a chook in there. In the, in the backwards one? There's a chook in there, a chook in there, there's a chook going in there. Yeah. There's one there. Trying there's, to make a nest. There's two in there, yeah. I was actually a bit worried that the, the nesting boxes facing each other, the chooks might not like it um, because they can see each other. But it doesn't seem to be the case. Um, what we can do though is have both, all of them facing that way, the entrances. Then a chook can get in there. It's nice and dark and they, they're not disturbed. That one doesn't seem to mind though. Mm. There's a chook in there already. So I can, you can see by a nice line of chicken poo back there that that was their favourite perch. So those two further back, I guess, as it gets cold, they all huddle up nicely together. And that's why it's nice to have this mobile. We'll be able to move this around and then they won't, they won't have a, you know, any fouling. Um, sunlight will deal with it. Just normal natural processes. Look, they, they happily share a nesting box. Mm. They're such social little chooks. Obviously this is off at the moment, otherwise I wouldn't be touching it. But one of the things that we found with this net, so the bottom line has no, has no wire through it. It's not carrying any uh, voltage at all. But the next net is very, very close. A lot of the time we can get it so it's quite straight, but some sections do actually fold over and then they'll start touching grass and you'll have multiple paths to, paths to earth, particularly back here where it's really bellied out. And I mean, this line is very, very tight, but just a combination of the slope of the ground and various other things, because these are a set distance, you can't do much about it. So we have found that this does um, have earth leakage and of course like this is a little bit long the grass here. So we got a 7000 volt energizer um, and at the moment it's energizing the pigs line and we've hooked up to this. <laughs> oh, sorry pigs. But this, um, this net is drawing a little bit out so from that 7000 we've got now about 4500 volts when I've checked the voltmeter so we've got a little bit of leakage to earth. So four and a, four and a half thousand is still enough to keep those pigs respectful of, of the wire and definitely any foxes, I mean, our, our chooks are still here. But it's one of the drawbacks with these nets. I think if you had a low energy energizer trying to deal with this, um, there's all of this, there's just no way to stop that, that folding on uneven ground. I'm sure if it was just a, a perfect, nice flat pitch, um, you could get it, but it's never like that on a farm, so. I mean, we, we, we can do it on nicely whippersnip grass, you know, like get a weed whacker, if you call them that in the States, and, and clear it out. But any undulation in the ground, you still get those bellies, and then you get the chance of a wire touching it. It only needs to touch at a few points to actually draw a fair bit out. So it's much easier to set up um, those string lines, but we really do need this for our uh, you know, chook, chook protection against predators. You did what you came to do. <laughs> Bath's on. Oh, look at that. She's bathing. They'll, they'll be able to have really good dust bars when they're allowed out in the, where the pigs have disturbed. Yeah. 
So these these chickens are hard working. They haven't taken handouts at all. No, they don't like scraps. No, they're pure. They've only ever been like um, raised on scratching up pasture. They they know nothing about about that sort of food. Yeah. Grain and grain and grass. Not interested. Interested in eating the mites off the other chicken though. <laughs> Watching a chicken dust bathing is just the, the, the pinnacle of satisfaction, isn't it? They're just, yeah. they look so happy doing it. Thanks for watching, liking and subscribing to our channel. We hope you enjoyed this week's video and we'll see you next time for more adventures from the Ramshackle Ranch.